People have been painting on walls as long as there have been walls. Artists left their mark on cave walls 18,000 years ago, and there are artifacts from ancient Egypt and Rome that show that grainers and mybelers were a class of specialised artisan about 4,000 years ago. In fact, my old boss Bill Holgate used to, to joke that grainers and mybelers were the second oldest profession. These techniques progressed slowly throughout the Middle Ages, mostly in churches and cathedrals, but went through rapid development in England during the 16th century, when ships came back from all corners of the globe carrying exotic timbers and stones as ballast. This whetted the appetites of architects and designers, but because of the meagre supplies, they turned to skilled artists to recreate the rich-looking paint and glaze and fill this supply void. Tools were invented, books written, and apprentices schooled. Grain and Mybelin reached its zenith, probably with the genius of Thomas Kershaw. He was born in Lancashire in 1819, and his skills were uh, really beyond belief. At the Paris Exposition of 1855, his competition panels were rejected by the judges and he was accused of using a photomechanical technique. He replied to this by setting up outside the exhibition and producing new panels on the spot. He, uh, he automatically won the gold medal. And he also became a favourite of Queen Victoria and Prince Albert when he marbled the columns in the Blue Room at Buckingham Palace. And his panels can be seen by anybody if they go to the Victoria and Albert Museum in London. Grain and marbling suffered a decline during the austerity of the interwar and depression years when expensive hand decoration was replaced by cold function and materials such as mass-produced plastic laminates made hand-skilled work almost extinct. Mybelin and Graney managed to survive in a few pockets of isolated activity, mainly in the north of England and Scotland, where the house proud valued the warm richness of a finely grained front door. The torch holder of the trade at this time was William Holgate, acknowledged to be the world's finest master in the 150 years since Kershaw. Bill was my master and my mentor, and he was like another father to me and I miss him every time I pick up a brush. And it's his methods and techniques I now have the honour of passing along. In recent years there's been a revival of sorts in the painted decorative arts and in a postmodernist world we again value the skilled artisan and individuality and reject cookie cutter mass production. Sensing money to be made it's not surprising that there are many teach yourself books that have been written but even the best of these represent only a poor and watery sham of the original and classic art. Bill despaired at this calling it sponge dabbing and feather wagging and when he passed away in 2002 I understood that I was now the keeper of the flame and Kershaw's I suppose and decided to continue with the work of teaching first at the University of California in Berkeley and now with the Architectural Arts Guild. But history isn't about nostalgia and the glorification of the past, it's about a, a guide to our future, as rainforests are obliterated and mountains quarried to rubble and dust, the trade in some species of critically endangered woods have been blacklisted to protect them, and it will be up to future grainers and marblers to step up and fill the new supply void as did the craftsmen of old. It's important that these classical techniques and skills to be passed along in their undiluted glory to a new generation of artists who can not only reproduce, but improve on the art as new materials and standards emerge. Membership in the Guild also represents a benchmark of standard, so that architects and designers can be confident that they are commissioned in a schooled artist of the highest quality.